ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our first fully electric car on the channel and we're welcoming none other than the Porsche Taycan or Taycan however you would like to pronounce it and this particular one is the very best the Turbo S model so 616 brake horsepower equivalent or 750 horsepower with the overboost function when you're using launch control and most importantly the torque figure 1050 newton meters of torque which I can assure you this thing pins you back into the seat less than 2.8 seconds to 60 which is just sensational so let's have a little wander around this car and find out a little bit more about this fully electric weapon so the Porsche Taycan obviously available in a few different formats this is the most powerful iteration being the Turbo S model as you will see we have absolutely humongous front brakes this is because this car has the carbon ceramic option specified um, we've also got the two-tone painted wheels which is a rather expensive option so this car is coming in around the 150 155 thousand pound mark as we work our way along you'll see here we have the fuel filler cap or should i say the electric filler cap so literally just swipe my hand under here and that opens it to allow you to connect your charge cable um, this car does have the quick charge function as well and then if I just swipe my hand under here again and as you'll see it closes it back over coming round the handles similar to those that are found on the 992 911 um, so if we press the key here and as you'll see they pop out and make it a lot easier for you to open the door we have full length side skirts on the car which are finished in carbon fibre and as we work our way round with a bit of youtube magic as always and the car is turned round and we're taking a look at the back of the car so starting off with the rear wheels as i mentioned we've got these two-tone wheels a fun fact actually is you can only have these wheels specified if you specify the carbon ceramic brakes and this of course has the black painted carbon ceramic brakes which are only a new option actually with Porsche as previously they've always had to be yellow now this car also has the carbon sport design package so you'll see we've got some rather subtle carbon fibre options on the car um, on the rear diffuser we've also obviously got it on the front splitter and the side skirts as I'd mentioned there as well and this car also has the fixed panoramic roof now for whatever reason a opening panoramic roof isn't available on Taycan as of yet anyway um, and perhaps maybe something they'll bring out at a later date but this has the fixed panoramic roof which I do absolutely love but without further ado let's take a little look inside this thing and see how practical it actually is so if I open the boot it's a touch of a key and as we can see the boot is actually filled with a few bits and pieces of camera equipment at the moment but plenty of room and of course fully electric as well if we take a little look in the rear now I'm six foot three so I'm going to step inside over these beautiful carbon fiber illuminated Taycan sill plates and as you can see once I'm in there's actually pretty good leg room in terms of height in the rear you couldn't really be much taller than me um, to be honest um, it's a little bit cramped there but more than suitable for the majority of families and if we take a look in the front and this is where I really love things so we have a full length screen that goes pretty much the full length of the dashboard so the passenger has a lot of control over functionality as well which I think is a really really nice touch we have this floating centre console as well so room behind there for popping your wallet or your purse and we've got two good sized cup holders which I know sounds silly but practicality is key in these cars nowadays I think um, and yeah plenty of room for storage and popping loose items and things like that as well now I've not yet opened the front boot so let's have a little look under here and see what it's like so firstly I need to work out how we open it now there's a small amount of storage I would say that is more for a charger or something like that to be kept under there but you could get a couple of small rucksacks under there I guess um, and obviously only thing you should really be having to top up there is your windscreen washer fluid so without further ado let's get behind the wheel of this fully electric Porsche and see if it can put a bigger grin in my face as the petrol engine cars do so hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to electricity we are in the Porsche Taycan Turbo S 
we've charged up a little bit. Not going to lie, this thing takes a little bit of time to charge, to be honest, which isn't ideal. And I had a horrendous experience last night with a smart electric car, but let's not go there. Let's move it on. Let's see what this thing is all about. So we're going to switch her up into Sport Plus mode. And I think we might just be able to get a good acceleration here. Let's see. So we're in Sport Plus, which is the most aggressive mode. No, it's not switching the gearbox up because this car doesn't have a gearbox. But let's go. Holy. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Right, we'll hold back here. I wonder if this will do a launch. This thing's just absolutely ridiculous. Like. And I know when you're watching a video, you're like, no, they are, you know, he's pinning himself back in the seat. I am not. Oh my God. That's what 1,015 newton meters of torque feels like. <laughs> no, like, you have no idea. I, yeah. <laughs> If you've watched the 992 Turbo S video, you'll remember me saying, wait for this Taycan S review. Like, this thing, like, not to 60, I've never felt anything accelerate so quickly. I think it's just the levels of grip as well, and the fact it's just instantaneous torque. There's no build up, there's no, it's just, <laughs> meow. But bleep that bit out, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Right, we're on a twisty road now, so I need to just compose myself. Right, red light can relax a little bit. What we're going to do is actually put it around some corners, and we've not been around any real corners yet, so I'm interested to see how this thing handles. So let's see. Using the central display here, I'm going to switch the car into right height level. So it's in low at the moment, which is the lowest. There's four right height levels, low, ward, medium, and lift. So we'll see what this thing is like in low mode for cornering. Now, this is a road that we use quite a bit. We filmed the new Aston Martin Vantage here. We filmed the Huracan Performante here. I think we filmed something else here as well, Matt. I can't remember what the Lotus Elise Cup. How could I forget that beast? Um, so yeah, we're gonna see what this thing is like on these roads um, and how it handles. So it is a big car. So I'm interested to, to see, and we just need to be mindful of the range here. And this is the one, my one gripe about electric cars is I'm constantly anxious about the range. So we're saying 81 per miles, but if I switch it into Sport Plus, that reduces that to 76 miles. So it knocks five miles off it straight away. And you can hear that noise, which is pretty cool. Which apparently is called Electric Sport in the Porsche setup. And it sounds like a spaceship. It really, really does. It sounds like an actual spaceship. Like, it's crazy. Oh my. Right, corner, braking, and round we go, wee bit, slight bit of understeer there, brakes again, carbon ceramics on this, which are absolutely fantastic, and then, oh yes, it, it's like driving a spaceship, I feel like I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm in Mars, Whoa! Back end, wee bit of twitch there. It's just, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Please don't sit in the middle of the road, missies. That does not help. So, yeah, this thing, let's spin around this roundabout and go back into that hole again. This spaceship is, oh, yeah, I can't really explain how I feel. Um, it's definitely rear wheel biased, but at the moment it's showing all of the power going through the rear wheels. If I put my foot flat to floor, I'm going to look here to see what they're saying about the power. Yeah, so it's actually, it's putting more out through the front there, which is interesting. Let's see if we can do launch control match, shall we? I don't know, I feel as if there's a... Oh, 
stories for watching this video with all the noises I'm making. That is just ridiculous. Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> that is bonkers. That is actually bonkers. <laughs> okay. So obviously there's no V8 soundtrack, there's no V6 soundtrack, there's not even a four cylinder soundtrack because this thing is fully electric. But this noise thing that Porsche have built in, which is called electric sport system, is, or electric sports sound, is pretty cool. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't really make you miss the soundtrack of a car. Yeah, you can't beat the sound of a, a V8 or a V10 or a V12, but they've done quite a good job with this, I think. And it, yeah, it's pretty impressive, actually. Matt, I can see looking over here at the range with that anxious look on his face. And as I said earlier, that is the one thing for me is it does terrify me um the, the, the range in this thing so talking about range i think on a full charge they they say that you can do 250 plus miles i think in realistic real world terms you're probably going to be around the 200 maybe even 190 mark again depends how you're driving the car if you're driving it like a maniac you'll probably get 120 miles but it just depends so for example we've got a mode here at the moment that i'm in just to try and preserve some electricity um, and this mode is called range mode so that's one of five modes you've got range you've got normal you've got sport sport plus and you've got individual as well so range mode basically gives you a maximum top speed of 70 miles an hour which is the legal top speed limit i guess so it should be more than ample for most occasions but yeah it just tries to preserve um, some electricity to give you a further extended range which is pretty good um, now there's obviously supercharger points and things that you can use for, for for these cars that you know give them some juice quite quickly however the infrastructure up here in scotland isn't quite there yet i wouldn't say so the chances are for you to get a full charge you're going to be looking probably for about eight hours ten hours to get a, a full charge on this thing um if you were to take it to a supercharger point it would be a lot quicker which i know if you're down south of the border or if you're indeed abroad um whichever country you're in may very well have a better infrastructure in scotland but yeah up here at the moment it's just not quite there yet but we should soon no doubt so yeah brakes handling this it, see it's quite a playful car i think the fact it's just got instant torque um means that yeah you i wouldn't say you could get into trouble with it but um yeah it, it, it does kind of kick the back end out a little bit and yeah it, it, it's a, a fun fun thing to to drive and if this is what the future of electric cars is like then yeah i'm not disappointed at all to be honest with you as soon as they've got the range sorted then yeah i'm all for it but until the range is sorted i think there's too much compromise for me personally So yeah, to sign off on this car, um, it is just as good as the reviews make out, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, you can tell by the grin on my face. And this is with um, lack of sleep last night as well, thanks to the smart electric car. Again, not getting into it. Um, <laughs> having a, a very, very poor range, um, but this thing is far better in comparison. But yeah, it, it's, it's seriously, seriously impressive. Um, and I am excited for the future of electric cars. Um, as I say, the infrastructure is only going to get better as we move forward. Um, so, yeah, get out, drive cars. This thing obviously is very expensive. It's, you know, it's over 150 grand by the time it's uh, properly specced out. Um, but there's obviously cheaper alternatives out there and battery technologies and things are only going to get better as we move forward over the next five, 10 years. So this is the future of driving and as i say in terms of power and performance you will not be disappointed i mean again just a very quick <laughs> yeah so the past 24 hours for me have been all electric cars so i will mention the smart car i basically have to take that from glasgow to aberdeen it's got claimed 80 odd miles range. The reality is far from that. I think we were getting about 60 miles out of a charge and we had to stop three times and it took what is usually about an hour and 40 minutes or 50 minute journey, took five hours 
and I didn't get in until 2am last night, so that was interesting. Um, then we headed over to see the new Lotus Via, which was in its parked Lotus in Hamilton. Matt should cue some nice scenes of the Via at the moment, um, which was absolutely spectacular. And given the performance of this thing, I cannot even begin to imagine what that thing was going to be like when it comes out. But yeah, two million quid, so you would expect it to be pretty mental. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited as a former Lotus owner, as is Matt, um, about the future of the Lotus brand and indeed to see what this Avaya is actually like out in the road. Now, with a bit of luck, we are going to be teaming up with the team, 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 from Hethel, and we're going to have, not a Lotus Avaya, don't get too excited, we're going to have some behind the scenes footage with some rather special new Lotus cars um, and some of the current range as well. So hopefully we'll have some of these in extended drives as we move forward. Um, so thanks to the team that we spoke to in at Parks Lotus today. And yeah, more of that to come in the not too distant future. So <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and we we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.